um, item 10. Uh, public. This will be uh, Deputy Superintendent Stallings. This is on item agenda item number 10, R277-101. Can you speak to that? No. Chair Huntsman, actually, uh, Ben Rasmussen is going to take the lead describing this rule. <clears throat> okay, Ben, are you? I'm here. Can you hear me? Ben Rasmussen, you state your name and title just for everyone that's out there on the streaming side. You bet. Ben Rasmussen, Director of Law and Professional Practices for the board. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So staff was directed to prepare R277-101 to comply with the uh, open and public meetings requirements on electronic meetings. Uh, the, there's a statute that requires that the board adopt either a resolution, rule, or ordinance that allows for uh, electronic meetings to be conducted. And so staff is asking, is recommending that we amend the rule on public participation to include these meetings. Uh, we're recommending that this be done on, on an emergency basis so the rule can take effect immediately. And then staff would bring it back to committee uh, after sometime after when the 120 day period expires for reconsideration and final adoption. Uh, but we're, we're happy to answer any questions that board members may have about the recommended changes on 101. Hansen. Uh, board member Hansen. Thank you, chair. Um, just one um, question and maybe proposed uh, revision. I'm looking at line 75 <clears throat> in the rule. Um, we say that um, that a quorum doesn't have to be present at a single anchor location in the event of a pandemic or other public health emergency. I'd like to strike the word health. Um, as an example, we just had an earthquake the other day, and that I think would be classified as a public emergency, which might prevent us from all getting together in one location. So just uh, I wonder if there's any objection to striking that word help. Is there a motion on the floor? Well, we don't have a, we don't have a motion. You're just asking a, a, a question. Anyway, that's the question my... for, for uh, uh, Rasmus, for Ben. I don't think staff would have any issue with that change. No. That seems reasonable. Okay, with, so without objection, Going way out of our normal without starting one place and then um, without an objection, we'll strike the word help. <clears throat> okay. Anything more? Okay. So I'm seeking a motion that the board approve emergency rule R277 101 public participation in Utah State Board of Education meetings on final reading. As amended. So moved. As amended. Yeah. So, so moved. Second. 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 We had a, okay, motion and a second discussion to the motion. Board member Lear, are you speaking to the R27? No, I didn't have a comment to this. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider the previous item after you're through with this. Okay, well, let me finish the motion. Okay. Thanks. I'm not seeing any other discussion on the motion. So the motion before the board is uh, that the board approve emergency rule R277-101 um, public participation in Utah State Board of Education meetings on final reading as amended. Let's vote. Board member Belknap. Aye. Board member Bolter. Aye. Board member Cannon. Aye. Vice Chair Cummins. Aye. Board member Davis. Aye. Board member Earl. Aye. Aye. Board member Gravett. Aye. Thank you. Board member Hansen. Aye. Board member Haynes. Aye. Um, 
Board Member Huntsman and I. Board Member Lear. Aye. Board Member Marsh. Aye. Um, Board Member Scott Hansen or Scott Nelson are you on? Board Member Thorpe. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion pa passes unanimously. Board Member Lear, you're seeking a motion to go back to the previous agenda item? Yes, sir. I'd like to move that we go back to item number eight. Okay, without objection, we will go back to um, item eight. And I have is, a uh, veto, veto request. Right. Uh, I have a you... motion. Are you ready for that? No. Yes. I okay. Is it, is it, has it been pre-written or you just make it? Uh, it's 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 semi-written. <laughs> okay. Well, I just don't see one in front of me, but okay. uh, no. I, but is it you want to be? I I I move that the board considering consider uh, requesting the governor to veto HB 332. That's the uh, special needs school voucher bill. I forget the exact title. Representative Schultz. Well, HB three, three two, okay. Is is there before I have you speak to it? Let's get a second. Second, Jennifer. Second. Okay, some of Jenny. I didn't second okay. it. I'm not seconding that. <laughs> I just would have liked some hands up on this. You would have liked one heads up. On which one? Would have liked a heads up. On this motion, I would have liked to have had some time to go through. Okay, well, I think Jenny Gravitt, so we'll, spend some, we'll spend time on it. We have on what that bill is. It was so you want to speak to the motion. Um, your, your motion board member Lear. I'd like to speak to it when it's my is now the time to speak to it. Yes. I'm asking you to speak to it. This was a bill. This was a bill that the board and I apologize to board member Earl. If there wasn't a heads up, this was these are extraordinary times. I don't think there was a heads up on much of anything in the last week. So I, I don't necessarily apologize. I'm, a, I'm and I think we've had a lot of discussion of these issues previously, but my reasons for um, seeking the um, veto are several and I will but I will not belabor the ideological ones, but talk about a couple of others. First of all, um, as I mentioned previously, when I've spoken against the bill, there is uh, now reduced about, I think it's between 59 and $69,000 for the board to manage this program, which will involve um, managing private schools or monitoring, not monitoring exactly, but approving private schools, approving and monitoring scholarship granting organizations that will um, involve a number of other uh, requirements that will take a considerable uh, time of the board staff. $59,000, which is my recollection of what the final amount was, is not even enough for a half of a WPU, um, WPU uh -huh. half of an FTE for the uh, process. So that is a concern for me from the board's perspective. Uh, the governor's office staff argued frequently that this was this program duplicates another existing program that is only barely filled, the Carson Smith program. And there were many, many um, requests to the sponsor to consider blending the Carson Smith with this program, which uh, the sponsor was never willing to do. And the, um, still a feeling that Carson Smith scholarship program could take care of many of these students if the parents um, were willing and if the legislature was willing. Um, there's also no sunset okay. date on this program, which is typical of most uh, programs that are this um, take away, take up this amount of money. There's no opportunity to review it or consider how successful it's been or how much work is involved or if there are financial concerns about the um, uh, about the monitoring of this. That concerns me. And finally, in this time of all times, the fact that we would consider a program and that the, the, the state would start a program that takes money away in the form of tax credits 
from the education system that now will happen to all children and children with disabilities seems really unwise to me. It doesn't seem like a fiscally conservative state to detract from the front end of our funding stream, which now will be broadened to these considerably um, important, not considerably, these crucially important groups and the, the needs given today's circumstances will be so great. And we are talking about giving tax credits for an unnecessary parallel system to two or three other systems we have. So for that reason, I hope that you would support and the fact that the board um, opposed the bill consistently throughout the session. I hope that you would support a veto request to the governor. Okay, discussion to the motion. Um, Earl. Board member Earl. We have discussed parts of this before. This has been altered a number of times. So I don't, I'm just saying, I haven't had time to go through it. There is administrative, I'm just reading on one of the lines, no more than 5% of the scholarship granting organization revenue from the program donations is spent on administration of the program. So I, I don't know what, I don't know whether that covers this or not. My point is, is there's not time to, I would have appreciated at least a day's heads up on this to have thoroughly vetted it and gone through it. I can't vote on this today. Okay. Um, board member Hansen. Board member Hansen. Sorry, I, uh, my hand was raised from before. Sorry. He's out. Yeah. Okay, I'm not, not seeing any. Nope. Not seeing any. Oh, sorry, member Davis. Board member Davis. Thank you. Board member Davis, did you want to make a? Did I you do. have a question or a comment? I do. I'll, I'll speak in favor of the motion. Um, you know, we know that when we talked about this in the legislative session, we voted 14 to 15. I believe those were the numbers to oppose um, this legislation. I, I know that the Association of uh, local school boards also did the same as did teacher and parent groups. But during the time that we were trying to figure out if we wanted to support or oppose this legislation, I contacted uh, one of the senior members from the uh, Legislative Coalition for People with Disabilities, and, and they oppose this bill. And they oppose it, she said, because it takes public resources from the schools that provide services to students with disabilities and puts it into schools that are not currently providing, especially itinerant services for students with disabilities. And that was a concern to her. And I also um, spoke with a member from the Utah Disability Law Center and um, he had similar concerns and he felt that those who took the scholarship would only be families that that could already pay for all of those itinerant services on their own. But he said his bigger concern went back to Carson Smith, where he said if people want this, they can do it through Carson Smith. There's no waiting list. But he said they even had a concern with Carson Smith in that it requires no evidence-based outcomes to show if this is actually helping students with disabilities to achieve or not. Um, so I, I certainly think if there would be probably one this year to veto, uh, this would be it. Thank you. Okay, um, board member Thorpe. <laughs> I just also wanted to speak in favor of this motion. I think that this is, we, we, we spoke about it before, we agreed that I think for the most part that this was not something that actually helps students with disabilities. And I'm really concerned about the, I'm really concerned about uh, walking around Carson Smith to, to, to implement this legislation. It doesn't feel that different to me, but I do think that it, it uh, I'm just not in favor of it at all. I hope that the governor would consider it. Okay, I'm not seeing any more, so we're gonna take this to the vote. The motion before the board 
is that the board request the governor to veto uh, HB 332 special needs scholarship amendments. Okay, we're going to vote on this. I'll, all those in favor, I'll start with, let me get my list. Okay, board member Belknap. Aye. Board member Bolter. Aye. Board member Cannon. Aye. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. Aye. Board member Davis. Aye. Board member Earl. No. Board member Gravett. Aye. Board member Hansen. Aye. Board member Haynes. Aye. Uh, Mark Huntsman's in a aye. aye. Board member Lear. Aye. Board member Marsh. Aye. Board member Scott Nielsen, are you on? Not seeing, not seeing him. Okay. Um, board member Thorpe. Aye. Uh, motion passes. There was one one nay. Do you have that, Miss Lorraine? Can you please unraise your hand if you um, are not wanting to speak right now? Thank you. That's handy to do. Thank you. That, that helps on our end. 